I want to make you aware today of a crisis that we have in this country, that we have around the world, and the crisis is a crisis of leadership. We have over 130 million people in our workforce who go home every day feeling they work for a company that doesn't care about them. That is seven out of eight people in the workforce. These are our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our sons and our daughters, those precious people we brought into this world have a high probability, 88% chance, that are going to work for an organization that doesn't care for them. I was educated and raised in an environment where creating shareholder value, profits, would result in my success. I took management classes. I got a management degree. I got a job in management. So what I try and do? I tried to manage people. I was never taught the awesome responsibility that leadership has over the lives that are influenced by my leadership. I was raised and educated where capitalism was about profits, shareholder value, and my success. So I think from this perspective that we have a, uh, a crisis in this country, a crisis of leadership. And many of the symptoms we are seeing, broken families, broken marriages, broken lives, are the result of us sending people home each day with a sense that they work for an organization that doesn't care about them. The good news is that we have the power to solve this tomorrow. We just need to engage our heads and our hearts in a leadership process that validates the worth of every individual, where everybody in this country matters. Our idea in leadership, what we have come to realize, is that our responsibility is to create an environment, whether you're in the military or in the industrial area or in government or in education, an environment where people can discover their gifts, develop their gifts, share their gifts, and, extremely important, be recognized and appreciated for doing so, which creates an opportunity for them to go home each night to their families, whatever that family situation is, and have a more meaningful life, a life of purpose where they feel valued and where they get the chance to be what they were brought on this earth to be. Let me go through a couple of the defining moments in my journey to understand this leadership. And it began with something that many of you will relate to, a wedding. I was sitting in a wedding, enjoying the splendor of this father walking this precious uh, daughter of his down the aisle, and everybody enjoying uh, how beautiful she looked and how proud the father looked. You can all imagine that. And when they got up to the altar, he took the hand of this young lady, his daughter, and he gave it to this young man and said, you know, I give this young lady to be wed to this young man. Her mother and I give this daughter to be wed. Now, any of you who are parents know that is the ceremonial words they use, but that is not what was in the head and heart of that father and mother right then. What was in their head and heart was, look at young man, I'm going to trust you with this precious uh, human being that her mother and I brought into this world. We have given her unconditional love, and I expect you, through your union, to continue to allow her to be and grow to be whatever she was meant to be. That is what I expect of you. And what I got from that is that all 7,000 of our team members were just as precious as that young lady. Every one of our team members was brought into this world by some mother and father who hoped the best for this precious young child that they brought into this earth. And that we as leaders, when we allow somebody to walk in our organization, we have an obligation as stewards of that life to continue to allow that life to be everything they were meant to be that we possibly can towards our common vision. So I walked away saying, we can have a dramatic impact on this world if we accept the responsibility for that life. The second story really had a profound impact on me. We had developed the ideas of continuous improvement. And in parallel with that, the ideas of people-centric leadership. And we were having a management meeting up in our Green Bay operation. And somebody emailed me the night before and said, Bob, you might be aware, a group of our team members went through this event for a large project in the plant to improve and employ continuous improvement ideas. You might want to walk out and recognize them. I said, why don't you invite them into the management meeting in the morning and we'll let them share their experience with all of us. 
So these three gentlemen were 7 o'clock in the morning. We were invited into this executive management meeting. And they stood before us, as I stand before you, and they shared with us the achievements of this project. They had improved quality, cut lead time, uh, in, reduced inventory financially, everything was and, and shifted on time. And you know the typical dialogue of an organization is all about numbers and performance and profits. I was blessed with a thought to ask this one gentleman, Steve, how did it affect your life? His answer was, I'm talking to my wife more. And I said, I don't understand. What do you mean you're talking to your wife more? He said, you know what it's like to be a part of an organization where you're going every day, you're told what to do, people don't ask you what you think, you get ten things right and you don't hear a word, and you get one thing wrong and you never hear the end of it. Do you know what it feels like to go home at night from that environment? He said, you don't feel very good about yourself. And when you don't feel very good about yourself, you're not very nice to your wife. He said, since we've embraced this people-centric leadership, since we've embraced the idea of continuous improvement where I have a chance to make my role better, to contribute my gifts, for people ask me what I think, for me to contribute to making things better, since we've done that, I go home feeling valued and better about myself. And when I go home feeling better about myself, I find I'm nicer to my wife. And believe it or not, when I'm nicer to my wife, she talks to me. What hit me suddenly was that the biggest number that I was going to look for, the biggest measurable, was the reduction in the divorce rate of our employees. That clearly said to me that we can change the world. It is up to us the way we treat each other every day and the profound impact that makes on our life when we go home to know that our life mattered. And finally, one of the keys we learned in our leadership model is recognition and celebration. A key part of what we teach is to reach out to recognize and celebrate the goodness in people. So we created what we called the guiding principles of leadership, which are the articulation of our beliefs on how we should treat each other in leadership. And then we asked people to nominate anybody in the organization who they felt exemplified those qualities. And then, in a ceremony, and, and uh, the first one was up in northern Wisconsin where we have 450 people working. We had this crazy yellow SSR Chevrolet outside with the top down, and we had 400 people out there. And we announced the person who our employees picked as the recipient, number one recipient of the Guiding Principles of Leadership. And their family was always hiding in the back to experience their precious child being recognized for their goodness in the organization is a profoundly meaningful experience for everybody involved, specifically the family. We have Guiding Principal Leadership Awards, Going the Extra Mile Award, High Five Awards, Innovation Awards, all kinds of awards. And so what our airwaves are filled with is goodness. So recognition is a key to our organization. And what I want to leave you with is that we you and I can change this tomorrow. It doesn't require money. It doesn't require anything physical other than your head and your heart to understand the profound significance you have on people's lives every day. We can change this world if we understand the great joy of leadership and the grave responsibility of leadership to look at those people under our care and help them have a successful life, one of significance, where they can share their gifts, be appreciated for doing so, and go home to whatever their family situation is with a sense that they matter. We need to move from a me-centric culture to a we-centric culture. Thank you very much.